to the Adorn It podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai, and this is episode 29. I have so much to share with you. Oh my God, I should almost split this into two episodes because between all of the knitting I've been getting done, there are three finished objects and at least three new cast-ons, maybe more. So lots to share today and yeah, yeah, I hope you're doing well. Let's talk about knitting and only knitting. <laughs> so my first finished object, you may be able to guess what it is. <laughs> I'll share a little of the details right here. Hi. Okay, so here are the details on my finished love note sweater. I love it, love it, love it so much. I'm so pleased. It's been a while since I've knit a sweater and the fact that this was knit on size 10s, it flew by. So this is the love note by uh, Tin Can Knits. Everybody and their brother has knit one. It is fingering weight yarn, fingering weight yarn held with a strand of mohair. So it's nice and fluffy. Um, I've had it on for about three hours, no itch factor, wearing a tank top. So really excited for that. Um, what else? I haven't woven in my hands yet. So last time I was there, and I had like half of a sleeve done. So as you can see, I finished the sleeves. I did make them an inch or two longer and um, very fitted. So I did change that about the pattern and I couldn't be happier with how these fit. See my guns. Um, <laughs> so that was a change I made. I made, I did some back neck shaping just to raise it up a little bit and I'm happy with how that came out. For the body length, for the longer size body, not the crop, the longer one, you're supposed to go to eight inches from the armhole. I went to 11 inches, so it ends right perfectly at my natural, at my belly button. So that's great, that's good place, right where I would like it. And then um, I did do the high-low hem, according to the pattern. I didn't do the drop down in front. I didn't, I was running out of yarn. As it is, I used up all of the Huntington I had and for the ribbing on the bottom, I just used straight speckled yarn, which you can't really tell the difference. It's just a little louder. I also used straight speckled yarn in through here. So, and if you haven't heard me talk about this sweater before, I was alternating a solid green with a speckled, kind of like this green yarn held with the mohair to get the effect, but not um, like to get the speckling, but not crazy speckling. So that's how I accomplished that. So I used 1500 yards to knit this. And yeah, that sublime mohair yarn has probably been in my stash for 10 years. So I have a half a skein left. I think I'm just gonna throw it away because I'm glad to be done with it and I can't see myself knitting anything else with it. And yeah, I think that's it, so. Finished object number two are my Desert Vista Dye Work socks. Yay! So these are my April socks, obviously. And I knit the Vanilla Bean slip stitch pattern for these on US size zeros. I did use a mini skein for contact, contrasting toes, heels, and cuff. I didn't have enough to do the whole um, all of it. So in a few places, like in this cuff, I can tell I alternated in some of the red stripe, but I love the way they look. They fit amazing. I did um, an afterthought heel on these. So I just went straight through the stitch pattern to the point where I completely forgot that I should be slipping stitches on the back of the leg. So they're a little interesting to look at, but um, yeah, I really love them. The colorway is Jaws. What else can I tell you about them? After that heels, so I went in with some of the blue and then, or I split the blue in half and then I went in with some of the blue and then switched over to the red to finish out the heels. Cause I like that forked look. And that's it, they're done. They're off the needles. Nice and quick for this month. So that made me super happy. The next finished object I have is the In the Light of Luna Cowl. Last time you saw it, I was where that little stitch marker is. So you can see I basically knit the second half of this, right? It, I was there. So I finished it, I went up to the top, 
for some reason my bind off edge doesn't look as neat as my cast on edge. Um, just probably something to do with the way I was probably trying to keep it loose. So I'm going to call this the top. I mean, it's going to be washed in block still. That hasn't happened. But the I used Knit Picks yarn for this. I used the um, Glimmer. So it has a little bit of Stellina in it. And I, here, I'll put it on. I made a, one change to the pattern. Otherwise, I did everything as directed. Size needles, everything. I did... Um, reverse the wave pattern. So on the bottom, the waves are white on the top and green. Like I switched, that's the only thing I did different. Otherwise, it is as the pattern calls for. I love it, it's nice and warm, toasty. I am really warm standing here. Maybe I'm gonna open a window. Yeah, because a mohair sweater is a, is a very warm thing. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's great. I cannot wait to wear this when we're in middle school. My oldest is eight, so we're a few years away from that, but the, our school is the green wave, so I will be cheering him on wearing this in the winter games, whatever those games may be. So I uh, definitely, I have this left out of two skeins. I have that much left, the main color, and then that much. So I, I haven't weighed it. I don't know how much I used but I'm, I'm sure it was great. Then that pattern's by K, little tin. So, <laughs> now I'm looking at new cast on. So let's do that. Well, let's do something that's sort of a cast on and sort of not. So uh, a couple months ago, at this point, a couple months ago, I sent some yarn to Freckled Whimsy to have some sock snakes of my very own. So this is a Patton's Croy yarn. I got six of them. So you're going to see more of these in the weeks to come. And at first I was torn because, well, I didn't knit the bulk of it. But you know what? I knit the cuff, the heel, and the toe. My favorite parts, right? The heel's my favorite part. But um, yeah, so I'm still going to make project pages and I'm still going to claim them. I'm not going to claim the total yardage. I had... Well, I think I had six skeins of this, so I sent two to her, and I still have two left. So I'll know how much I knit of this, and that's what I'll claim for yardage. That seems fair to me. And then, um, yeah, so I've never used a sock snake before, so there's definitely some learning with this, right? So I picked off and I did the toe great and then I looked at it and I thought okay this is the point where oh and you can see that I knit from there down on the toe and I thought okay this is the point where I would I, yeah I'm gonna cut it's way too short <laughs> so this one I set aside I was like you know I'm not sure because I was trying to maximize my sock snake and get two pairs out of it, right? Because I do have so much to use for heels and toes and I would like to use this yarn up. I can't remember who gifted it to me, but someone gifted me this yarn and I already had two skeins of it of my own. And so I have a lot of this and I'd like to just use it up. And I thought it would be cute if my folks had matching socks or mom and I or that, you know, some combination thereof. They're yellow, so that makes me think dad, but we'll see. So set this one aside. And as you can see, I have done, I picked up and I did ribbing for the next one. And then I laid one of my finished Desert Vista Dye Works socks down on the tube to help me measure. And then I cut it and put a toe in it. So the second one was much better. And I worked the toe and then I worked the, um, an afterthought heel into it and yeah I have a little marker here just to show me um, where I was at with the color repeat we'll see how crazy I am about making it match lot most times I like socks to be identical but I think I'm gonna have to let that go a little bit on these although I have been trying to match them up for the second one so here's what I've got um, <clears throat> and I have to say, I'm very impressed. Here, let me get close. See that? 
the gauge of the sock yarn and stop shaking Stephanie and the gauge of my needles are just spot on I'm so glad she did a wonderful job she had me she has a whole form you fill out before you send the yarn it's very reasonably priced to have her crank them up and um, yeah I can definitely see this as an excellent way to work through stash yarn that I've been gifted my mother-in-law emptied out her um, sock yarn she used to be a sock knitter and then she stopped and so they're all it's all her color palette and I would love to knit it for her but it's not colors I'm drawn to so I sent a couple to be sock snaked so I can get her some socks out of it and I I don't normally do stockinette socks I out my vanilla sock is a two by two rib on the top so they, they fit a little bit differently than I'm used to but it's pretty good pretty good I'm I'm I am decently happy about these. <laughs> so, and I'm excited to be getting stuff out of the stash. So I think I should be able to get, let me see, show you, to get another sock out of this for this one. And then I'm not even holding it right, whatever. Get another sock out of this and then get the start of so these I'm probably gonna just knit the heel and then go up the leg myself for the second pair which I'm fine with whatever it can be a mix of machine and hand knit so that's my thought on those I could make them shorty socks but um, my parents aren't really fans of shorty socks so they're good for in the summer but I get it they're kind of hard to hold up and whatnot so those are on my needles and kind of off my needles Last time, I like it, I've got a table here I can just stack things on. Last time I mentioned that I wanted to knit um, Jen from Down Cellar Studios her Stay Out of the Forest hat. Oh, this isn't great, it's really tiny. But it's a color work hat with um, three colors in the pattern. And it's inspired by the my favorite murder podcast and I kind of wanted is this weird I kind of wanted to use a red color on it like blood I know, I know. <laughs> but I found this um because it's it calls for DK weight yarn so I found some Barocco vintage in my stash that's this great um deep deep fuchsia mauve color so that was my compromise I also pulled out a gray and that's what I cast on with and then for my third color, because the pattern itself, Stay Out of the Forest, has some trees in the motif, I kind of wanted to use a green. So then I thought I'd use some of the new abstract, the abstract fiber, fiber I just up. got in this beautiful colorway for some of the trees. And then I thought, how much contrast is there gonna be between these colors? And I got overwhelmed and I set it aside. <laughs> so I want that hat, I will knit it, but I have to rethink what's going on. I also thought I might use the white from my cowl that I just finished. That could be really good in this. Or, I don't know. Maybe I just need to take a black and white picture and look at the three of them and go from there. Because, yeah, that has been working really well for me. You're going to see why in a minute. So, that's on my needles, but not, not super heavily on my needles. And then this, I'm... I should probably not even show you this. Last Sunday, my parents came over and we had a driveway visit because social distance, distancing, but it was nice. We had two hours and we it was warm. They brought their camp chairs and we brought ours from inside the house and everybody sat in the driveway and we chatted and it was nice and it was fun. And so I had finished my DVD socks for the month. Sorry if you can hear my children, they're crazy. Um, <laughs> I'd finished my DVD socks for the month that I needed a pair to knit on. So I grabbed these, which were from, here, I'll show you the first one, the Pigskin Party Relay Knit Along that I was a part of. I, w I think I went first and I had um, the feet. So I knit this sock and somebody else knit, the, knit a second sock. So I didn't have to knit a second sock and I had other projects I wanted to work on and I whipped these out. I only sent this out in like four days, three or four days, like 
really fast for me. And I did this um, two by two cable up the leg, came out of my head. I did my standard sock construction, the Wendy Johnson heel that I love so much and put everywhere. And then after I turned the heel, I added another cable up the leg, not too long on the leg. And I kept it a two by two rib that works out of the cable. So I thought it looked pretty. And while I was sitting out there, well, don't you know, I turned a heel. Maybe I turned the heel the night before. Anyways, worked my leg, way up the leg. I'm in the ribbing. I, I literally have like three inches, three rounds to go. And then this sock is done. I got distracted and um, really wanted to finish my sweater. And so it's like, stop putting it aside. You never finish sweaters. I gave myself this whole pep talk because you know, my garden gate, I was all into it and then I stopped. And I didn't want that to happen with this because I wanted to wear it in the spring and have it and be done, right? And, um, and so this got set aside and body knitting is stockinette knitting. That's very mindless, easy to do in the evening. So I probably won't show you these again because all I need to do is finish the leg, finish those little bit of ribbing, but yeah. So there you go. That's where it was last time you saw it. So that's what I knit in a week on these. So there's that. That's not a new cast on, but it's, it's kind of new. It's new-esque. Okay, now. This is my sweater knitting bag and you're seeing it. I decided that holding yarn double and knitting with size tens, which is what I did for this, was a really great thing. And I wanted to do it some more. <laughs> so I probably spent two hours last night searching Ravelry, you know, narrowing it down to like my top three. I wanted a cardigan. I wanted it to be um, DK worsted Aaron weight so I could knit on eights, nines, or tens. That's what I was shooting for. And I was gonna hold some sock yarn double and do a faded type sweater. And I didn't, there wasn't a cardigan fade styling that I liked out there. And who was it? Anyways, there wasn't one out there that I liked a pattern. And so I thought, okay, I'll get a basic sweater pattern. So this is the Ramona cardigan there and I'll do my own fading. So that's what I did. I think it was six or 650 for this pattern. It is by Elizabeth Smith Knits. Um, she had just updated it the day before. So Ravelry, because I sort by hot now, a lot of times when I'm searching for something, making sure I'm not missing what's cool and new. <laughs> so this might've come out as hot right now because it came out for other people. Anyways, whatever the reason is. So I decided that would work for me. It has some great um, texture around the waist. Not sure if I'll do it. It looks kind of like seed stitch or broken rib. I'm not sure which one it is. I haven't read that far. And when I was searching for patterns, I wanted it to be top down because it's way easier to adjust your sizing if you get to the bust and you're like, oh no, this circumference isn't gonna work, right? And so like I I've been doing, I knit about three inches and then I measure my gauge and check it, which I haven't actually done. I measured it, but I didn't check it against the pattern gauge. I'll do that later. So this is knit on size nines. And I decided that I would do the progression for the fading of holding A and A and then A and B and then B and B, B and C and C and C, you see? You see what I mean? <laughs> so I would do that. Um, I want each section to be about three inches is what I was thinking would be reasonable and keep my interest. And so looked at the schematic, the whole sweater from collar to end is for my size is 22 inches, which I should measure one of my sweaters I currently own to make sure that that's the length I will want it to be before I go too much further. Um, but anyways, I took that and I, the 22, I divided it by, I have five colors I want to use. So that's nine changes, right? If I hold each yarn doubled and then hold it with one other color and another, anyways, it's nine. Um, what was I going to say? 
I'm thinking about the color progression right now. So I laid out my colors. I knew last night that I wanted to start with this. You can see it's off already. This is the Friends colorway by Blinger String. It is a speckled gray, beautiful yarn. It came with two minis. Uh, so I don't know if it came with two minis or if I ordered an extra mini because I loved the speckles. These colors are speckled in there. So I have some left. I, I may use these colors for the collar since this is at the top. I thought that might be nice or the button band. Not sure I have, I have a Knit Picks yarn that's similar to this in color. It's like butternut squash color. Um, so I could make stretch this further if I needed to. One strand of that and one strand of this. So that's an option. I might do that or it might be too loud once you see the colors of my sweater. So that's color number one. Then color number two is Miss Babs. Number three is some Lorna's laces. I'm gonna hold the other two. Okay. And then four and five. That's Into the World is number four. And number five, I wanna say, is String Theory. So I'm trying to go from dark to light and from gray to purple to green. I, it was more about how do I use the colors I wanted to use. So I wanted the Into the World <laughs> and I wanted the Friends color. And so, so what do I have to put with it to make it work? So I feel like this works really well. I laid it out took pictures, did the black and white thing to check that my saturations were getting darker. Um, the Into the World colorway is a little bit tricky because it does have the light gray in it. So there will be some pops that are a little bit lighter, but overall this reads lighter to the eye. So, and this Lorna's Laces, I've had it forever. I'm so happy to be using it. All of these are super wash. I know that. I haven't looked at What haven't I looked at? Content. <laughs> Man, my brain just like shut down on me right there. So the Ramona cardigans I have cast on, and of course I'm in the middle of a row and round. I have cast on, I have done my first color change into my second and started my third. So this basically looks like every top down raglan you've ever seen. It's um, nothing earth shattering. It has a really cute detail on the raglans. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that, but I do like that. Um, yeah, but I wanted the speckling and the yarn to do the talking on this. I didn't wanna do a lot of patterning. So that's why the bottom will be this solid color. So I may do that broken rib seed stitch, whatever it is, moss stitch on the bottom four inches it looks like um just because it's solid or i may not we'll see we'll see how i feel when i get there but i'm just so excited about knitting a sweater right now I'm so excited so um these are size nines did i say that they are the fabric is pretty loose so um it should be a pretty squishy sweater i'm okay with that like Ideally, if I wanted the same sort of firm texture that I have in this, I should have gone down one or two needle sizes. But I wanted to knit on big needles with yarn held double. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm fine with it. It'll be a little bit airier. So yeah, there it is. There it is. Isn't it pretty? I think it's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So those are my new cast-ons. Yeah. Exciting, huh? The only thing, only other thing I want to quickly share with you is my yarn acquisition. So uh, the Grocery Girls, Tracy, I don't remember what episode it was or when she was talking about it, but somebody somewhere was making a pattern with a wool linen blend yarn, and I was like, hold the phone. So I went searching, I think I went to Loopy U first, I went to Webs, and then, I don't know how I found that Pearl Soho has this yarn, but they do, and it's called, I think it's their house brand yarn, it's a 50% wool, 
35% alpaca, 15% linen. So I ordered two colors to try. Um, I thought this was more ready. It's, it's pretty bright pink. So this will probably be the main color of said shawl, which will be nice and drapey with the linen and the alpaca. And I'll contrast in that. So these are 440 yards for 100 grams. No yarn. Yeah. Everybody's buying everything all the time right now. <laughs> you can totally see it on rainy days when it's gray and dreary and you know the shop explodes and it's like yeah i was shopping too like we're, we're all in that same place right now all riding the corona wave together so um yeah it's week five or six for us and we're doing good we're going strong i have moments where i feel completely overwhelmed by my children and two hours later it's the end of the school day and I sit there going, why was I so overwhelmed? So, um, you know, highs and lows, ups and downs, easy days, hard days. It's all over the place. And I'm just going with it and giving myself permission to take a day off if I need to or cut a day short. Or what did we do the other day? I just, I was like, ah, you know that when you're just so crazy from everything. It's like, okay, boys, get in the car. And we drove to a uh, the park near us that's still open, Hilton Park, and we walked for 25 minutes, and I walked the speed I was walking, <laughs> and it was up to them to keep up or wait for me, whatever, because, you know, kids, they run, they drag their feet, they do all those things, and it was great. Afterwards, I felt very refreshed. I had some endorphins going, and yeah, so it's good to get out, good to uh, see the world a little bit. So there's that. And I've been cooking. I don't like cooking. I, <laughs> I've been watching. What have I been watching? What's new that I haven't told you about? I told you about the heist, the money heist. I watched the first two seasons and then I kind of was like, mm, typical Stephanie fashion. I kind of set it aside. We'll see. Um, I'm sure I'll go back to it. But right now I'm just not in that in that place. I did check out because Boston Jen has the Grace and Frankie shawl. Seriously. Because she designed a pattern and named it after that show. I was looking for funny things like comic like sitcom type stuff, which is not what I normally watch. And I had tried Grace and Frankie when it first came out and I watched an episode and a half and it wasn't for me. So I went back and I started it again because well if Jen likes it, it's probably pretty good. I love it. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so funny. I, I, I think what turned me off initially is that I thought the show was about Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin's character. And it is like, they're great. They're in it. But I'm watching the show for Martin Sheen because I, I was wing, you know, he's just, I've always had a soft spot for him and who, who doesn't love Jack McCoy, even when he's old and goofy. So, um, I've been enjoying that. His name is not Jack McCoy, it's Sam Waterston. <laughs> but he was on Law and Order for 16 years. And I did a little researching about this. Um, <laughs> he has four kids and apparently all four of them are actors. And one of them is Tina in Fantastic Beasts. The like lead female character in the offshoot of Harry Potter stuff. So that was cool to see that, oh, that's his daughter. So I enjoyed that. Um, or I am enjoying that. And there are seven seasons, so plenty to catch up on. I am still going back through Supernatural when I have a night where I'm, I'm feeling like, okay, give me something a little heavier, but still silly. I love Dean. I will always love Dean, no matter what. Um, yeah, so I'm on season 12 of that. And yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm glad... If you've watched the show, I'm glad they went back to the Lucifer character that was the original Lucifer guy, actor, that portrayed him, because I think he's perfect for it. Okay, what have I been reading? I have finished The Shadow of What Was Lost. I don't remember who it's by, um, but it's his first novel, and it's really good. So it's one of a three-part trilogy. It's um, fantasy, epic fantasy similar to Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time, same narrator. So it's funny because Wheel of Time is 
I don't know, 12 books or something. And I listened to all of them and Michael Kramer, see I remember the narrator's name, he was the male narrator. So I knew his characters, you know, like this voice is Tom Marilyn's voice. Whenever he does that, it's Tom. I know it's Tom. So he's narrating this one and I have to remind myself, no, that's not Tom Marilyn, that's someone else <laughs> when he does that voice. But it's just comfortable. It's like being with an old friend, having him read it to me. And it's, uh, I want to say 26, 25, 26 hour book. So it's plenty out there, plenty to sink your teeth in and listen to. So I finished the first one, really enjoyed it. I'll do the next couple. Um, but in between, I need to, the Brandon Sanderson series, I, I don't know if it was his first series, the Steelheart Reckoner series. I did the first book, I liked it. It's um, light, quick, superheroes, fun, right? And um, recommended it to a friend and she read it and now she's on the second one and I was like, I can't be left behind. So now I'm reading the second one. So take a break from the shadow of what was lost, which I think is, Lycian series? Not sure. Anyways, take a break from that and go back to The Reckoners. <laughs> that's a three book as well. So comic books and sci-fi. That's what I'm into. <laughs> yeah. And I think that just about covers it, right? I've been watching back episodes of Tea and Possibilities. I just found Nikki. I think she's super fun to watch podcast. And I've also been watching back episodes of Periscoping Sisters. So those are two podcasts that are new to me that I'm really enjoying catching up on. And they have lots of older content. So that's fun. That's it for me for today, I think. So <laughs> have a great 10 days or so until I see you again. Happy knitting. more than your highest. Yeah, my highest was 23. All right, nice job, guys.